Okay, so um, this is sort of a, an add-on to the podcast uh, uh, that I did on picking mutual funds to implement an asset allocation plan. And as I mentioned in the podcast, I wanted to show you two resources, Morningstar and Vanguard, to give you an idea of how you can evaluate uh, mutual funds on your own. It's a Morningstar is a free tool. There is a premium membership that I use, but for what we're going to cover uh, today, you don't need to pay for anything. All of this information is free. And so I want to start with the Morningstar tool and look at evaluating two what on their surface appear to be very similar uh, Vanguard mutual funds. First, the Vanguard S&P 500 index. That's what we'll look at first, uh, that fund, and then the Vanguard total market uh, uh, stock index. And so just to give you a sense of how the tool is used and how it can help you. So uh, the first thing you do is just type in the ticker. So the Vanguard S&P 500, I think, is VFINX. Yeah, this is the investor class shares. They actually have different share classes uh, for most of their mutual funds that vary based on how much money you invest. So if you type the ticker symbol into the quote box, uh, it gives you, uh, it comes to a page that um, has really a ton of information. I want to focus on just a couple of things today. First, always make sure I've got the right ticker, and I do. Here's the, van, the, the name of the fund. So the first thing I look at are the expenses. We can see that here. It's 0.17% uh, or 17 basis points. Very, very inexpensive. You'd expect that from Vanguard. You'd expect that from an index fund. But it's always important to know how much you're paying uh, for your investments. The other thing I would note over here is the minimum investment, which is $3,000 if you're investing, say, in a taxable account. If you happen to have this fund available, uh, in a 401k, there won't be a minimum investment. But if you're investing on your own, there is. And for investor class shares at Vanguard, 3000 I think, is pretty much the norm. Um, here, you'll see uh, the um, the performance of the fund over a number of years. It, 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 there's actually three lines here. They're difficult to see. One is the, the, the a line for the fund itself. And then, uh, um, more importantly, there's a large blend, but the S&P 500 itself and the reason they're so similar, as you would expect, is because this is an index fund that tracks the S&P 500. So you, you would expect it to be almost identical to the S&P 500 performance off just a little bit because, uh, once again, because of the expenses we pay for the fund, but should be very, very similar. The other thing to, to notice is this investment style box, and it's described as a large blend fund, and you can see this little uh, box here with a dark square at the top, uh, which represents large companies. And the blend in the middle, if you recall from uh, podcast 25, we talked about value versus growth type companies. S&P 500 sort of covers everything, and that's why it's called a blend. Um, so we can take this, though, one step further. If we use this, uh, go to this portfolio tab here, this gives us some additional helpful information. The first thing it shows us is how uh, the mutual fund invests in what it invests in, as you can see, as you'd expect, most of it's in U.S. stocks, the vast majority of it. But if we scroll down further, we see uh, this similar type of style box, but with more detail. So the way the style box works for, for stocks is the top row is for large caps stocks, the middle row for mid cap stocks, and the bottom row for small companies. And if we look vertically, uh, here we've got value and growth, and then the middle would be a blend of the two. And what this box tells you is what percentage of this mutual fund invests in which style, which box. So as we can see, the vast majority uh, is in large companies. There's about 10, 11 percent, 12 percent in, in, in mid-sized companies. And as you would expect from an S&P 500 index fund, there's no, none of the money is invested in small companies. And then in terms of the value blend growth, it's sort of spread out equally. That's why it gets a blend designation. So it's very helpful to come to this style box and, and see how uh, the money is being invested. Now, um, you'll notice again, there's no, no money invested in small companies. And that gets us really to the big difference between uh, this fund, the Vanguard 500 Index Fund, and the Vanguard Total, total Market Index Fund. So let's, let's go over there. Um, and let me just, and so we're at the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. Let me just head back to the quote section for just a, a, a quick second. Again, same expense ratio, 17 basis points, same minimum investment. Okay. We go back over to portfolio. We can see now that there's a little less invested in large companies, a little bit more invested in mid companies, and now 9% uh, in small companies. And so this fund will give you a, a larger exposure to the U.S. market than the, the, the 500, Vanguard 500 index fund. 
And I think that's important to understand. If, you're, if you want one fund to cover the U.S. market, I personally think this is the better fund because you get exposure to small, small, small companies and a little more exposure to middle-sized companies. Um, it's not the only way to do it, right? You could invest in the Vanguard 500 Index Fund and then invest in a separate fund uh, to get c- exposure to small, smaller companies or to exposure to, to mid-sized companies. Uh, there's no sort of right or wrong way to do it. A lot of it just depends on you know, how much trouble you want to go through. Do you want to cover the market in one fund, which I think is perfectly acceptable? Or, or do you maybe, in some cases, some folks say, I want a little more exposure than 9%. I want to have a little more control over how much I've got invested in small companies. In that case, you would have to go beyond just this one fund. But again, I think this is a great fund to cover the whole market. But really, the point is just to show you how to use this tool, how it can be helpful to you, and how you can use it to understand what a mutual fund is investing in. Uh, this just scratches the surface on what Morningstar offers. Perhaps I'll do additional screencasts in the future, but I wanted to show you this as you start to research mutual funds to uh, to, to execute your asset allocation plan. Now, quickly, I want to just run over to Vanguard here. Vanguard has two types of mutual funds that will take your money and, and, and invest it in multiple mutual funds for you. So all you have to do is invest in one mutual fund and Vanguard does the rest. The first one is this Vanguard Target Retirement Fund. So here's how it works. Let me just scroll down here. You see they have different age brackets. And so here I'm looking at the someone aged 18 to 20. They've got roughly 46 years to invest. And Re- Vanguard recommends this Target Retirement 2060 Fund. And man, that seems like a long way away. Um, if you scroll down, you'll get a summary of the fund. You'll see its asset allocation. stocks, 10% bonds. And with this type of fund, your allocation will actually change as you get older. Vanguard changes it for you automatically. Again, you start out with this allocation, as you can see, and then you can scroll the bar, and eventually these numbers will eventually start to change. There we go. As you get older, Vanguard automatically moves some of your money out of stocks and into bonds, and you can see the percentages uh, there. So this is, I think, a, a useful tool to play with to see how Vanguard would, would, would create an asset allocation plan for you, how it would change over time, whether you choose to use this sort of fund to execute your asset allocation plan or not. And then the other thing you can do if you come up to Holdings Management tab, it'll actually show you the, the specific Vanguard funds they would use to invest your money in the percentages. So again, I think this can be a helpful tool whether you choose to go with sort of a one fund solution or not. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is similar concept. Vanguard calls them life strategy funds. Very similar to the, the, the target retirement funds, except that your asset allocation does not change over time. Uh, and some people like, like to have more control over their asset allocation. They don't want a mutual fund company changing it for them, but they still like the simplicity of a single fund solution. So the life, life strategy fund may be an option for you. And if we scroll down here... Uh, we can see the different allocations that they offer. Four different options ranging from 20% stocks, 80% bonds, all the way up to 80% stocks, 20% bonds. And if you click on the details of each of these, you'll see something like this, very similar to what we saw before. Um, And it'll show you, again, the funds they invest in, how much. You can also get the overview, again, similar to what we saw before. But again, you don't see that, that sliding chart because your allocation doesn't change. If you pick a fund here, and the allocation stays the same. So again, I will leave links to these Vanguard pages in the show notes. That's doorroller.net forward slash podcast 26. So you can check these out. Hopefully they'll be helpful to you as you, um, as you pick mutual funds for your asset allocation.